we want to split it up into easy to work with shapes. One way we could do that, there's not one unique way, but I split it up into three rectangles. But you could split it up into one rectangle and then cut out two other rectangles. That would be a choice. You could split it up into a rectangle that goes up the whole uh, height of it and then break it up into four other rectangles. Again, my rule of thumb is as few shapes as possible, and I would rather use positive shapes than negative shapes just to make it easier. But no unique way to do it. You'll get the same answer as long as you do it correctly by breaking it up into whatever shapes uh, you want to use. So I'll break it up into these three shapes. I'll call this shape one, two, and three. Given coordinate system right in the center of, this is usually referred to as the web. We have three shapes. We're going to start with finding the centroid. In this problem, we are interested in finding just IXX, so the moment of inertia of the composite shape around its own, hor the, its own horizontal centroidal axis. Because it's completely symmetrical, can we just assume that it's at the center of the we, we could, and the math will, will tell us that. But there are, we actually do want the y tilde values, because we're going to need those to find the moments of inertia. So it's, it's good to have kind of that instinct to make sure that we're doing it correctly. But this step will be helpful. And also we need to know these areas because we'll need that in the second step also. Because we only want IXX, and we know that IXX is going to be the sum of what I call IXX prime, each shape's moment of inertia about its own centroid, plus the sum of the ADX squareds. I don't need any of the dy's, which are defined as uh, x tilde minus x bar, but I will need these dx terms, which I define as y tilde minus y bar. So I only need these values here. I don't care for this problem about the x tildes or the ax tildes. In subsequent problems, I will, but for simplicity, this one does not. First step, just the centroid problem that we've done before. So looking at shape one, it's 50 millimeters by 200 millimeters. This will be in units of millimeters squared. Shape number one will have an area of 10,000 square millimeters. Shape three has the identical dimensions, 50 by 200, so it will also be 10,000 square millimeters. And shape two is 300 millimeters tall by 50 wide. Shape number two's area is 15,000 square millimeters. The total area of my shape is 35,000 square millimeters. Next is the Y bar for each of my subshapes. This is always measured with respect to my origin. For shape number one, what should the y bar value, uh, sorry, y tilde value be for the first shape? Right. Measured from the origin, I have to go 150 to get to, from the origin to the base of it. And then since it's a rectangle, half of its height, 150 plus 25, 175 millimeters is my y tilde. Shape number three, what is its y tilde? I'll go three next since it's symmetric here. Right. Negative 175. Again, this is always measured with respect to the coordinate to our origin. I have to go in the negative y direction to get down to it. Hence, negative 175 versus 175. And lastly, shape number two. Where is the, or the uh, centroid with respect to the origin of shape number two? Right. This one's at zero. So they do coincide. That's not always the case, but it happens to be the case here. I just have to multiply across now. So 
So 17.5 times 10 to the fifth, negative 17.5 times 10 to the fifth, and zero. When I add this together, it adds to zero. I get my y bar by taking zero over 35 times 10 to the third. And as expected, y bar is zero. None of this is new. It's just getting the centroid. It's usually not this simple. But we do want to go through these steps. Now we add on the new part. Now we're going to be concerned with the moment of inertia steps. Moments of inertia are measured in units of length to the fourth power. In this case, everything is in millimeters, so it will be measured in millimeters to the fourth power. Shape number one, how will I calculate the shape number one's moment of inertia about its own centroidal axis? which passes through here. Yeah? Right. I use the canned formula, the BH cubed over 12, to get this value. The dimension perpendicular to, in this case, the horizontal axis is the 50. That gets cubed times the 200. That thing divided by 12. As a result, I will get 2.1 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth power as shape number one's moment of inertia about its own centroidal axis. Keep in mind ultimately what we need, and that's where the adjustment terms will come in. We have to adjust for it because we actually want the moment of inertia about this axis. What we will compute, we'll get to this in a second here, this dx value and then this adx squared value that compensates for that difference. For shape number three, what will I fill in for this cell? Right, shape, same as shape one because it has the same dimensions, but it's about its own, its own centroid down here, but it's still 50 cubed times 200 over 12, so also 2.1 times 10 to the sixth. And then going up to shape number two, how will I compute its moment of inertia about its centroid? Right, 300 is the dimension perpendicular to that horizontal axis times 50 over 12 for shape number two, and we should expect it to be larger than the other two because it's oriented with its uh, longer side uh, in the direction it's being cubed. We should get 112.5 times 10 to the sixth. I can add this together to get the total of 116.7 times 10 to the sixth for my IXX prime terms. At this point, really the hard work is done. The rest of this is going to come from things we've already uh, determined. dx, remember, was defined as y tilde minus y bar. For shape 1, y tilde was 175, y bar is 0, so dx is 175. Shape 2, 0 minus 0 is 0. And shape 3, negative 175 minus 0 is negative 175. It really doesn't matter here if you put positive or negative because we're going to be squaring it in the next term anyway. So if you want to put all positive numbers here, that's fine. If you want to keep track of the sign, that's also okay. Last column, we just take the area of the shape times this dx squared. 10,000 times 175 squared gives us 306.3 times 10 to the sixth for shape one. This is that adjustment term. Again, this is compensating for the fact that this is only the moment of inertia about its own axis, but we need the moment of inertia about the composite shape centroid. So that's why we're adding value here. We get zero for shape two since the dx value is zero. And for shape 3, again, 10,000 times 175 squared, 306.3 times 10 to the 6th. As an intermediate check here, if it's a positive shape, these, the IXX prime and IYY prime will both be positive, and ADX squared, ADY squared will also be positive if it's a positive shape. If it's a negative shape that we're cutting out, we have to remember to make these values negative, 
and or negative for that shape. And the ADX terms will also be negative because the area was negative. So we'll, we'll get a negative for both pieces of it if it's a shape we're cutting out from our figure. In this case, they're all positive because all of our shapes are positive. Lastly, I can add this together. Get 112.5 times 10 to the 6th. These are with rounding. It was unrounded here, at least in Excel. Last step, I now can get the composite shape's moment of inertia about its own centroidal axis. I just have to take this value here and add it to this value here. If we add this together, our total is 729.2 times 10 to the 6th millimeters to the 4th power. 